Super AI was able to fit so many great features inside of its amazing app and the way they were able to do this was by separating it into different view modes. So when you first launch the app, you are going to be in what the app calls classic mode. There's a lot of great stuff you can do in this mode, but I'm not going to talk about it in this video. So let's go to pro mode. The switch modes, we're going to press this circle record up here right in the middle on the top. And then we get all of these different modes. This is also where you could access your settings as well, which I'll talk about later. And we got classic, the second one over is pro mode, and the rest of them are different modes, such as looper, auto mix, one deck, and I will talk about that in other videos. So to select pro mode, we are going to click on it. And now this is what you are probably going to see. It might look a little bit different if you have changed some of the visual settings, but for the most part, this is what you are going to get. And it is truly amazing how they were able to fit so many features that you could use at the same time by just using the iPad without a controller. Uh, obviously you could use a controller, but you could do it without a controller and do everything that you need to do. First off, what I wanna get out of the way is the different hidden stuff that you might not know about that might be hard to find. So let me just load up a deck. I'm just loading up the scratch sample. To load up the scratch sample, you just hold in the, hold in the music button and then we get the scratch tools holding the music button, scratch tools, just so you can see the waveforms. So in this view, we have a jog wheel and these are updated jog wheels. They have information about how much you adjusted the BPM. If you see it changed there, it has information how far in the song you are and how much of the song is left. All very useful information. This is a feature that you would find on professional DJ gear like CDJs and very expensive controllers. So they were able to fit it in and I think it is really cool. So here are our jog wheels. So this is the jog wheel setting that it should start on. If you go to the middle button, then go down to settings and then go down to appearance over here jog wheels we can change them there's a compact dark light one which is the same as dark but it's brighter and then there's the extended i would recommend keeping it on extended just so you get a bigger surface area so you can scratch now another hidden feature within this menu is over here in these waveforms so we have these nice horizontal waveforms when the song plays you can see them go they're also active just like a jog wheel that you could scratch and manipulate the music like that if you press over here the one and the two drop down i made a dedicated waveform video but i'm just going to show you some quick stuff you could remove the whole jog wheel so if you are a dj that likes to dj with waveforms you get this beautiful view of the waveforms and no jog wheel and like i said these are active so you could scratch and do whatever you want with the waveforms there's really no need for a jog wheel i personally like having the jog wheel so i'm gonna leave that on and if you didn't select dark mode please do that now it makes it so much easier to see the contrast and see what's going on in your waveforms regular mode dark mode so keep it on dark mode especially if you dj outside you could do vertical waveforms. I wouldn't recommend that because it's much easier to see the horizontal waveforms. So maybe take a screenshot of this now to see what settings I use. Dark mode, jog wheels on, waveforms, horizontal. Now, the reason why this screen is so great is because this middle section here, so it might be selected on this. This represents the mixer. The middle represents your library. The right represents your looper and sampler, I'm gonna start with this. So this is our mixer section. Now, if you press this hidden button down here, this EQ button, now we have three band EQ and a filter, volume sliders, our gain control, and our levels over there. Now, why this is so great is because we could control our, we could control our EQs while using narrow mix or while using our cue points or while using looper, or while using the effects. Now, if you wanted to do the same thing in classic mode, you could do the same thing, but now you lose a jog wheel and you lose the waveform. So you're making a sacrifices in pro mode. There's no sacrifice at all. We have our waveforms, we have our cue points, and then we could use all of these features over here. I made videos about how all of these works. You guys could check those out. Now, another thing that is great is we get this bigger view of our playlist. We could go to our title playlist. We could go to 
whatever we want. And you guys could adjust and see your playlist in this big view. And then over here, which is awesome, is we have our looper. So we could set a loop. I'm just going to do a quick one. It's probably going to be bad. Don't judge me. So we have a loop. And then now, while the loop's playing, we can control every part of the looper. And we could scratch. This is why if you plan on using the looper or the sampler, then I would recommend DJ using pro one. mode instead of the dedicated looper mode, because in the dedicated looper mode, yeah, you get you, you get a bigger view of our looper and sampler, but you don't have any view of your waveforms. You don't have any job deal, so, so you can't really do anything else unless you are just using the looper. So if you plan on using the looper, you can do it in pro mode. It's truly amazing. You could set this whole loop down here. You have full control and you could even control the volume of the decks if you press this button down here. Now the bottom stays the same. We have the Nero Mix slider here. We could also control Nero Mix here. I love how they put the Nero Mix slider down there. It makes it so easy just to get rid of the instrumentals, get rid of the vocals like that. The BPM slider is not that big, but it still is pretty precise. And if you want to do the exact BPM, you could just press sync once and then deactivate it. And you got the same BPM, but you're not using sync. You have loops over here. You could set the loops here. You could also set the loops here and have more control of different functions of the loop. But a quick way to set the loop right up there, that's how you can do it. And then now this one's kind of hard to get to and you might have got there by accident and you didn't know why. So this is the mixer. This is the playlist and music sources. This is looper and sampler. And then now if you press the one you selected again, we get this, I call it giant waveform view. So look what you can do in this. You have these really big views of the waveforms, which are great to know what's going on in your song, especially if you use uh, DJ software like Tractor that is more waveform heavy. And then you have full band EQ here, volume slider here, BPM here. You don't get the jog wheels again, but the waveforms are active and they work as a jog wheel. And then sync, and they, you still get to keep Nero Mix. You don't get to go to your effects and all that stuff. If you wanted to do that, you'd have to go back to here. But if you want to see your waveforms in a really big view in pro mode and be able to do most of the stuff that you would want to do, then this is a really cool feature. And again, to get to it, all you're going to do is press the one you selected. There's no dedicated button. You just press it again and then wherever you were, it disappears and you get this big waveform view. Now, if you guys want to learn more about the waveforms in DJ Pro AI, I made a full waveform tutorial. So check out this video up here so you can learn more about the waveforms. Thank you for watching.